Friends, thank you for inviting me into your homes and your churches. Jonas Salk, a biologist, once said, If insects on earth disappear, within 50 years, all of life on earth would end. If all human beings disappeared, on the other hand, from earth, within 50 years, all forms of life would flourish. In our lectionary reading this week, we're introduced to some readings that look at the effects of sin on humanity and the environment. Well, our first reading looks at the account of Adam and Eve in the garden. Sin has been committed by both, and now God is dishing out sin's punishment. Follow along with me as I read Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. And he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labour you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and you will rule, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, <coughs> you must not eat of. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taking, taken, to dust you are and to dust you will return. Some of these verses, what, so from these verses, what are the effects of sin on creation? Well, firstly, we note that Every part of God's creation has been affected by the wrongdoings of Adam and Eve. The one that deceived Eve was punished. Eve herself was punished, as well as Adam. We are told in verse 17 that even the ground was cursed. Note what it says. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. The effects of sin are so wide-reaching. There, there, there was a separation from God, where God expelled both Adam and Eve from the garden. And, the, and this garden basically symbolised God's presence with them, a place where both man and God walked together and spent time together in one another's company. But sin brought an end to this. The relationship that they had with one another was brought to an end. No longer was Adam able to spend time with God. The relationship that they enjoyed was now severed. Sin brought about a severing of the relationship with God. The other matter is that sin brought about a curse of the land. Sin affected the environment. No longer would food become available to them from the hand of God. They had, they had now had to work and toil the land in order to produce food uh, from it. The other effect of sin was that it brought about death, both spiritual death and physical death. At the moment, sin took place, humankind died spiritually. There was no delaying in spiritual death. Spiritual death occurred immediately. Physical death, however, would come at a later date. Both Adam and Eve were warned about partaking of the fruit from the tree that was in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God said to them that the day you eat thereof, you will surely die. So sin brings about immediate spiritual death, but physical death is introduced in our next reading. And that comes by way of a murder in Genesis chapter 4, verses 8 to 16. And this is what it says. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to, to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? 
I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord says, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you will drive me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who, if anyone who kills you will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Why did Cain kill Abel? Well, Cain killed Abel out of jealousy. Both men brought before the Lord an offering of their produce from their crops. Cain brought food that he grew and worked hard to grow, whilst Abel brought the fattest parts of his land and presented them before the Lord. God was pleased with Abel's offering, which made Cain very angry, and as a result, he killed his brother Abel. Physical death was now a part of humanity. Mankind has died spiritually when they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, or expelled from God's presence, and now, beginning, now we see the beginning of physical death that takes place. So not only did death happen spiritually, but also physically. So what do we do to remedy this situation? Well, there is not a thing that we can do. Do they run and hide and put their heads into the sand, hoping that it'll go away? No. There is no escape in the penalty of sin. There is no escape in the creator and sustainer of life. The psalmist knew this when he uttered the words, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to, he to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not dark, uh, be dark to you. The night will shine like day, the darkness is as light to you. Friends, there are a number of things. Uh, we need to know about the character and nature of God from this text. Firstly, we know that God is omnipresent, meaning that he is everywhere. There is not a place that we can go to hide from God. You can't run and you can't hide because God is everywhere. Secondly, he knows all things. He knows the things that we do wrong. He knows the things that we do right. And so he is an all-knowing God. He's omniscient. He's an omniscient God. And so thirdly, not only is he those two, but he's also all-powerful. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so we need to rest in God's character and nature in order to um, have our matters of sin dealt with. So God is all-knowing, he's all-powerful, and he is ever-present. When we consider the effects on sin on humanity and our environment, how should we respond? And I suppose that's a question that we can toil with today as we consider the thoughts on this particular text. Well, I believe there's only one way we can respond, and that is in faith. Faith in the finished work of the cross of Christ. And Paul, in our reading in Romans, tells us that God had prepared a remedy for sin and that he would send his son into the world to die for us. The one that knew no sin became sin for us in order that we might become the righteousness of Christ. And we need to always remember that. So not putting trust in our circumstances and our situations, but putting trust in our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And friends, let me tell you that there is only one remedy for sin. And there is only one way to have our sins forgiven. And that is through Jesus. Paul, in writing to the Corinthian church, reminds us that Christ died for us. I want to suggest that we hold on to the truth of the Bible and seek to apply biblical truth to our lives. Not looking to our own understanding, but looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for your word to us today. We ask, Lord, that as we continue now to ponder and reflect upon it, we ask, Lord, that you'll give us a greater appreciation of all that Christ has done to remedy the wrongs of the past in order that we might walk in newness of life. Help us to be good stewards of everything that you entrusted to us, even the environment that we live in. Help us to, to look after it. Help us to look after one another in order that the environment, Father, might yield up the crops that we need to sustain us in life. So be with us as we continue to ponder these thoughts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.